Hello everyone. So in this video we will see fish eye state routing. This state routing actually I originated from global state routing. And in our previous tutorial I have mentioned that link in uh, comments as well. You can refer that link and you can understand global state routing. So here I will just provide a brief of GSR. So before going to GSR, first of all uh, there are some uh, key point of fish eye state routing. So first one this is originated from global state routing and second this is based on link state routing and the way it is different from link state routing is that in link state routing all link state packet flooded in the network. So whenever a node send a LS packet to its neighbors those neighbors in turn broadcast that information again and again. So information actually flooded whereas in fish eye state routing information is not flooded it is sent to only its neighbors. So here I am just giving you a brief how this global state routing works and how fish eye state routing is different from GSR. What is the actually problem with global state routing? So in global state routing every node actually maintain three table and one adjacency list. So these tables are this is known as topology table this is next hope table and this is distance so as the name implies this distance will this table will store distance between this node and other nodes like distance between a and b is one distance between a and c is infinite it means b is not having any root to node c next hope information this is used for routing purpose like in order to send a data to this destination what is the next hope and this topology table actually store ls information so whenever a node send its topology table to another node those node will update this table so whereas this one is received information and this is the sequence number like at what time that information is generated so here in gsr every node will send its entire topology table to its neighbors and on receiving this table these neighbor actually update their own table like uh, this node B received topology table of node A. So for destination A this is the LS information. So it will compare this information with its own. So it will find out there is no information stored in topology table. So it will first update its own table with this information. Now same C node also will do the same and then node B will update next hope and distance table accordingly. So here when we receive this information we will find out that node C is receivable from node A. So in that case this information is updated next hope A is given for destination C. And this information this distance also calculated that distance between B and A is 1 and C is a neighbor of A so this distance will be 2. So in that way GSR works these uh, tables actually shared between neighbors and those neighbors will update their tables and after updating their tables so we are having a final version of their tables so what is the problem with global state routing is that in case if a network size is very large so there will be a huge number of nodes and that would result in a huge uh, amount of information in form of topology table has to be shared between neighbors. So if we are having a huge network size of topology table also will be very huge and that topology table when whenever it will be transmitted in the network it will consume a considerable amount of bandwidth. So in order to solve these issues fish eye state routing develop. So fisheye state routing how it works this actually used fisheye technique and this technique actually divide our network into multiple scopes many scopes. Now what is the scope? The scope is actually defined as the number of nodes reachable within a given number of hopes. For example let's say if we are considering this node as a center node and we are defining let's say we are defining we are saying we are dividing our network into three scope 
in scope 1 all node will be considered which are having distance 1 hope in scope 2 all nodes will be considered which are having distance 2 hopes and 3 will be for nodes which can be reached from this center node more than 2 hopes so this scope criteria can be changed we are having only for demonstration purpose here so first we will see scope 1 so in that network what uh, whichever node is uh, directly connected to this one will be considered in scope 1 so these are the hopes which are in scope 1 similar for scope 2 all nodes which are having a distance of 2 hop from this center node so these will be uh, nodes which will be in scope 2 and remaining all will be in scope 3 so this is also in included in scope 3 so network actually divided into scopes now what's the use of dividing that information or that uh, network into whole uh, multiple scope uh, that information actually used that how these topology table will be transmitted so here uh, we are having a view of a gsr routing that these are the tables every node will be having so the scope actually used that any node which are having less scope like uh, if we look at the distance here if we look at the distance table so node b is having one distance node c is having one distance and node d is having two distance so if we divide this network into three scope uh, let's say in two scope so these two will be in the scope one and this node will be in the scope two so if a node is in larger scope information related to that node will be sent less frequently okay so this is the core point nodes which are having less scope number so these nodes b and c are in less scope or we can say these nodes are more near to node a so information related to these node b and c so a b and c this information will be shared with its neighbors more frequently and the node which are having more distance or node which are having high number of scope that information will be shared less frequently so this actually this division of information according to scope actually reduce the message size so previously entire topology table is shared between uh, neighbors very frequently now what is done the period of time the period when that information will be sent again this period for nodes which are having less scope will be uh, less and node which are having a uh, larger scope for those node period will be high so here we can say and uh, we can say this thing this information will be sent to neighbors very frequently and this information will be sent less frequently so this is the core concept of Fisher state routing so let's say what actually will happen so if node b wants to send its information to node a and b so here this one we are using to represent let's say distance so distance from node b to b is zero node a having one distance node d is having one distance and node c is having distance two so b will send information of nodes which are having less distance or we can say these nodes are in scope one so only their information will be sent by node b so node b will send only this information to the neighbors very frequently okay yeah. period between sending topology table again will be very less now here if you can see node c is having distance 2 so information related to node c will be sent to its neighbors less frequently so if we say period for sending information about b a b and d is let's say 1 second then period of sending information 
about C to its neighbor will be let's say 5 seconds. So in that way size of information will be reduced and hence bandwidth consumption also will be increased. Uh, reduced sorry. So global state routing actually a special case of fish eye routing protocol. So in global state routing there is only one scope. Okay, there is only one scope, and that global state routing actually also working li uh, like a fish eye routing protocol. So this is the way how fish eye routing protocol works. If you have any doubt, you can comment or you can uh, send me an email as well. My email ID also mentioned in the information. Thank you very much for watching.